Wyoming. It's time to take a look at what's happening around Wyoming. I'm Wendy Corr, bringing you headlines from the Cowboy State Daily Newsroom for Monday, April 29th. Well, most people would like to think they'd act as Ryan Pasborg did February 1st of 2022 when he rushed into a burning Green River home to save a mother and her child stuck inside. But it's impossible to know until faced with that situation. Pasborg's life has changed a lot since that fateful day, receiving a Carnegie Medal, the nation's highest civilian honor for heroism, and a new job and career as a result of his heroic actions that day, according to Cowboy State Daily's Leo Wolfson. The home was on fire and he saw it as he was driving by and he stopped immediately, got in the house, crawled on his hands and knees and saved the mother and her young child. So flash forward two years and Pasborg's getting uh, awarded this medal from uh, Governor Mark Gordon on Saturday night. But what's really remarkable and how his life has really changed since then is that when Pasborg found out that he was going to be awarded this medal back in December, he was actually unemployed at the time. And gaming company Pesomatic, uh, which runs Cowboy Skill Games, and they had honored Pazborg in the past at Cheyenne Frontier Days, found that he was the perfect fit for a job that they were trying to fill in Wyoming. Uh, Pazborg had no real experience of any kind with uh, gaming or gaming machines or anything like that. But I spoke to uh, Paul Goldine, the owner and CEO of the company, and he said that it was it didn't matter at all. It came down to the character and the courage and the heroism that showed uh, that they were looking for the, for the exact right fit uh, in their next employee uh, to represent the company in Wyoming. Passborg said it's a job that's changed his life. He now plans to retire with the company. The Pinedale mom, who was slapped with $400 in citations for setting up a stand for her daughter to sell Girl Scout cookies, wants out of the international spotlight. In fact, after telling her story to Cowboy State Daily's Pat Mayo on Monday, she's turned down offers from people wanting to show support for her daughter's effort to sell 1,200 boxes of cookies. Pat says he's personally fielded nearly 100 emails about the story. Everybody wants to know, where do you send money to buy cookies for the Girl Scouts? I've even had one person offer to pay the legal bill of $508. But the mom told me, um, which I think speaks to her, speaks very highly of her. She says it's not about the money. It's about abuse of power. City officials are standing by their legal account of the dust-up and say that the citations were justified. A man calling himself Lee the Horse Logger has lived on the road in a horse-drawn wagon for 18 years, and he's making his way across Wyoming again. Cowboy State Daily's Mark Hines caught up with him near Hannah on his fifth trip across America. Interesting character. He's made his living as a professional horse driver. In other words, doing things like, you know, driving those horse carriages you see in the big cities. Yeah, he told me in 2006 he started out on a journey that really hasn't stopped since then. I mean, he's taking breaks here and there. Uh, he's on his technically his fifth crossing of the United States. This time he's going from Nevada to Boston, but he doesn't see those as separate crossings. He sees them as all part of the same continuous journey he's been on. Horse Logger has a network of friends he's made along the way who help him with such things as making grocery runs or delivering sacks of grain for his horse, a Suffolk punch gelding named Jesse, who weighs 2,250 pounds and consumes about $1,000 worth of feed a month. Saratoga cowboy J.B. Zilke has traveled all around the globe, taking ranch jobs where he can and learning how the world does Western. Cowboy State Daily's Jake Nichols interviewed the world-traveling jet setter who has, quite by accident and much to his content, traded a short-lived, adrenaline-fueled bull-riding career for something just as treacherous, ranch work in some of the remotest places on Earth. He's trailed cattle on every continent except one. He's been all around the world. His passport is filled up and he's uh, he's got a book out. It's just fascinating guy to talk to from Argentina to Mexico to Sweden to South Africa to Mongolia where he rode a reindeer. J.B. Zilke has punched cattle everywhere on this planet. His self-published book, The Lost Cowboy, has won two 2024 Spur Awards. In it, Zilke chronicles his adventures on six of the world's seven continents, places that offer the last of the Old West. 
And if returning the Greater Yellowstone Ecosystem's native species is truly a priority, the nation's first national park would be teeming with more than grizzly bears, wolves, and huge bison with prehistoric genes. There also would be a thriving population of giant mammoths calling the ecosystem home. And if a group of ambitious genetic scientists have anything to say about it, Yellowstone tourists could one day have to navigate mammoth jams on their trips through the park, along with its majestic bison and bears, according to Cowboy State Daily's Andrew Rossi. The company Colossal Biosciences has committed to resurrecting the woolly mammoth through a mammoth-elephant hybrid by the year 2028, and they want to introduce these genetically resurrected mammoths into modern environments and make them essentially wild animals, restoring animals that have been extinct for at least 10,000 years and maybe longer. When facing the question of a hypothetical future with mammoths in Yellowstone, many scientists believe the greater Yellowstone ecosystem could absorb their return without much trouble, but the gigantic creatures could wreak havoc on tourist vehicles as well as modern day buildings. And that's today's news. Get your free digital subscription to Wyoming's only statewide newspaper by hitting the subscribe button on CowboyStateDaily.com. I'm Wendy Kaur for Cowboy State Daily.